thank you all for coming tonight. Um, my name is Kevin Champagne. I'm the, the chair of the Fire Station Building Committee. Um, I've been a resident of Norfolk since 2007 when my wife and I moved here. So I've actually voted to replace or, or renovate this fire station two times already. <laughs> um, so we're hoping the third time is the charm. Uh, so when the opportunity came up to join, uh, or, or throw my hat into the ring for the, to join the fire station building committee, I was happy to do so. Thrilled that I was selected to be part of the committee. Um, when we first met, really a, kind of a, a, a top goal that we had was community involvement. Um, we wanted to make sure that everybody knew what was going on, everybody could have access to information as, as it was being developed. And so this, this meeting is really the first step in that process. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the schedule. Um, our architect, Doran Whittier, was kind of the brand with their schedule. We have some other community events planned along the way. So hopefully we'll see you all at those future events, along with hopefully others, as this kind of gains a little bit of momentum. Um, we'll start with some, some introductions. Uh, as I said, Kevin Champagne, I'm the, the chair of the building committee. I'm uh, Aaron Kinney, I'm the fire chief. Uh, yep. Blythe Robinson, town administrator and also a member of the committee. And then a few other committee members kind of scattered around if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Uh, Chris Baker. Uh, I'm Justin Janicek, I'm a member of the committee. Hey everyone, John Kent, my daughter Elizabeth, a uh, <laughs> member of the committee. Uh, we also have um, members of our owners project management team. Uh, John Lemieux and Steve Kirby, as well as uh, the architecture team, Doran Whittier, that we selected for the project. Um, Ron, I don't want to butcher your last name, but Ron Lamar. Yep. <laughs> uh, Don Walter and Jason Harris. Um, so, where we are in the process, obviously, to date, we've, we've hired an OBM as we're required to do by, by Mass General Law. Um, we're happy to do so, obviously, for Texas. We've done a lot of fire station, a lot of public safety projects, along with Dora Whittier. Um, so we brought Vertex on board. They assisted us in the, the architecture selection, designer selection process, which we interviewed five great firms, but we all felt that Dora Whittier was really head and shoulders above the rest. So we were lucky enough to bring them on board, and we've been working with them to kind of start to program the building, working with the chief on his needs and try to figure out what this building's going to look like. Um, so the feasibility study is the first step. That's underway. Um, they've done their existing condition survey, walking through the existing building, see what we're up against, and then start to kind of plan out some of those spaces. Um, next steps, they've started the conceptual layouts, and then ultimately sometime in December is, is the aim is we'll start to get some cost estimates and, and some approaches, whether it be <clears throat> renovating and adding on to this building, whether it's building new, and kind of what the logistics of that are. Um, so, as I mentioned at the beginning, community outreach, community involvement is big to us. We've got a few different ways that we're going to do that. Um, one, our meetings like this, as we kind of go over the process. Uh, we also have uh, the Norfolk Community Facebook page that we've been posting information, including this meeting. Maybe some of you saw that there. And there's also going to be a town web website, correct? Is that up There's yet? a page on the website that we're working on the best way to roll that out. And we're, we're going to try and vet what information we can, we can put up there so that it's kind of easily digestible by everyone. Um, so tonight's topics, we're going to briefly review the project schedule and, and the process. And I'll turn it over to, to Dorn Whittier and Vertex for that. Discuss kind of high high level fire station needs and kind of what some of the shortcomings of this building are. We'll have a tour. Um, that's that's going to be by your staff, correct? Uh, for anyone that's interested in walking around the building. Um, and we'll, we'll open it up to questions, thoughts and questions if anybody has any. We can do that either before the tour or after. Um, so, that being said, I'll turn it over to Chief Kinney for a few words and then um, 
Dorm Lanier can kind of take you from there. Uh, first, I just want to welcome everyone and uh, thank you for coming out. Um, obviously, this is a very important project, uh, not only just for the community, but you know, for me as a as a new fire chief here, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a, an important step in, in continuing the exemplary service uh, that our fire department and the members of this community uh, have grown accustomed to. Um, so again, thank you for coming. We will have an opportunity. I'm going to have uh, Lieutenant Finland who's been with the department for over 20 years. Um, he's he's going to uh, guide a tour through for, for you all so you can see some of the existing conditions. Um, we'll also maybe answer some questions, just you being able to see um, some of the deficiencies or some of the challenges that we have um, as an organization to you know, how we provide service uh, with the, you know, the building size, uh, some of the limitations uh, and things that we face on a day-to-day -day basis for our operation. And again, we'll be available to answer any questions. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, we hear your input, we hear thoughts, and we, uh, you know, provide you with as much information as possible as we go through this process. Uh, and again, welcome. Thank you. And I bring everybody up to speak on what we say. Yeah. Yeah, for the camera. Chief. Um, so I'm Don Walter. I'm a principal with Don Woody Architects, and uh, we're thrilled to be hired for this project. But, uh, I, I hope you see what we've seen so far in, in that this project is much needed for Norfolk. Uh, and, uh, we're hoping to help get them to where they need to be with a solution that's either a distance renovations or a, uh, a new facility. Kevin uh, briefly mentioned what the, uh, the process is that we're going through. Oh, before I think it goes, uh, Ron Lamar is our, our project manager, and uh, Jason Harris is doing our programming design, just so you know what our roles are. But uh, we've got a few steps to go through before we get to open a new fire station, right? So what we're really involved with right now and what we've been hired to do is, is a study. And uh, with that study, what we've been doing is we've gone through and done some existing conditions analysis uh, based upon a lot of previous work that's been done here. So there's been a lot of good work done to date. And, uh, and also at the same time we've been doing programming. And what that entails is just going through and, and working with the fire department and the chief and determining what the space needs are within the facility. And we will say that the chief has done a tremendous job even before we got here, by identifying what those needs are. So we've been meeting with the fire department, with some members of the, uh, of the uh, building committee, uh, in, in a working session, going through that program, and it actually started to do some layouts to see how the addition to renovation might work on this, on this site. So there's a lot of good work happening on a weekly basis uh, with this group, and we're also working with the building committee by the so our goal is to program, develop options, narrow those options down, and get to a point come December where we have a preferred solution that can be brought forward uh, ultimately to be uh, voted on at some point by the community probably about a year from now. So uh, that's a general overview uh, of the schedule. Assuming that everything goes well and we're able to get a project that goes forward next fall, we would then go through and construct it over anywhere from a, a six, 12 to 20 month period. And the reason there's so much range is we don't know what the solution is yet. It's a new building would be a lot shorter. It was a, a renovation addition building could be a, could be a lot longer. So uh, that gives you a general sense of where we are. I don't know if I missed anything wrong. No, that's, that's pretty much it, and as Kevin said, um, these little red dots you see here in the schedule is community engagement because we know how important it is to not only keep you informed, but listen to you and take into consideration everything that your thoughts are because uh, you know the town and you know the fire department, and we're always looking for great ideas that come from the community. That's it. Okay. Um, so I guess before we kind of Take a tour. I'll open it up if anyone has any questions. What were you brought on board? 
So we, we interviewed the architects at the begin, beginning of September. Um, they were formally approved. We, I brought it to, or the building committee brought it to uh, the select board uh, at the beginning of October. So they've been on since then. October 7th. <laughs> what property is the new, what property currently belongs to the fire department? So, uh, sure. So we own the property. Could you go in the middle, sure. <laughs> So we own the property that we're on right now, where the station is, and plus, in I think 2009, the town brought some property from the church next door, and so there's there's space on that side to consider, uh, you know, as we figure out where the building should be and what size and and, and, and orientation. We have opportunity uh, that the town already took care of to, to consider putting some part of it perhaps over there or shifting it from the side that it's on now to, to a slightly different layout. And there was obviously, as a lot of places in town, there was a pretty high ledge bedrock on that side that some removal was already done that we're hopefully going to be able to take advantage of with, with properly citing, citing whatever work we do here. So. Regardless of what solution is, is proposed, who, whose responsibility is it to deal with taking care of Chief's needs during the project? And I, I'm sure that that could be quite complicated. Sure. So uh, I think a, a lot of that falls on, on the architect or on Whittier to kind of take his, his ideas, get it on paper, and, and have it kind of work in the most efficient way possible, so that there's no wasted square footage in, in the building. I'm talking about maintaining service during the construction. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Whose responsibility? It wouldn't be yours, and it wouldn't be yours. Sure. Where does that fall? So what we would do, we put together what we call construction documents, which are basically the drawings and the specifications that are developed for a contractor to come in and build whatever the solution is. So in those documents, we'll make it very clear that this is a fully functioning department assuming everyone's going to stay here while uh, construction is going on. And we'll create clear boundaries between construction and the daily operations of the fire department. So there'll be separation between the two. So fire service is not affected at all. Part of the consideration is making sure we can continue to do the great work that they do, the timeliness that they respond, and not miss a beat despite having perhaps a building being erected next to them or next to them and then renovating with the space that you're in. So uh, there's no option to raise this building and start over on this footprint? Not that's without not. creating something else that, right. because the trucks need to, you know, most of the trucks need to be inside. That's my point. Yep, and so that's all got to be figured out and hopefully in a really cost effective way so we don't spend money on temporary facilities that take away from, you know, what we need to spend on the building itself, the equipment that needs to be in it, and all those sorts of so things. So there's no option to rebuild on the same site? Well, yes, there there is. is. Yeah, I, I would say that there, there's no, all options are being considered okay. right now. I think what, what Blythe is saying is that the downside of, of raising the building is, right. that, <laughs> is, is that now you have to have some sort of temporary facility, and there's a cost to that. We don't want to try and relocate them off the site. Um, because that's expensive, and but how do we do it that maintains everything and gets the construction done in an efficient way? Yeah. Actually, maybe I'll come up. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Aaron Hunt, resident member of the building committee. Uh, I think it's worth noting, too, that uh, both the architect and the project manager went through uh, an interview series with the, the building committee, and those interviews are all available uh, through Norfolk TV. And some of the options uh, and the experience of, of both companies, I think it's, it's worth watching because it, it, it will inform the public as to the fact that the, the two entities involved in the project have a lot of experience with these projects. And some of these options were discussed, but just sort of, you know, in broad brush strokes. Is this possible? Is that possible? And, and at times, the committee took uh, the opportunity to ask some sort of probing questions to make sure we were dealing with the right groups too. So some background there. I just wanted to <coughs> I'm Betsy Whitney. I live in Cotton Mill on Valley Street. We've been residents 40 years. 
I'm very supportive of this project, and I like hearing that you're going to <laughs> always on duty, <laughs> exploring what it is to renovate and exploring what it is to start from new. Um, I'm interested in, in how that discussion goes. Um, and I'm thinking, I used to teach in Sudbury, which was rather a long ride from here. I had the benefit of traveling through Medfield and watching their process. And I think that, so my point is that you have lots of people that you can reach out to, ask questions, get advice, because they've been there. Uh, I, I just adore the fire department and the police department. I was very much in favor of the police department's project, and I support this as well. So here we go. We have a lot of learning to do, and that's great. And as they say, problems are solutions in disguise. Thank you. <laughs> if I could share with you, we were the designers of the Medfield Public Safety Project. So, well, I, hope you like it. I love it, and I go by. I lived in Medfield for 17 years, so I saw then and now. And as I travel to Sudbury every day for 36 years, um, I watched it. Oh, that's wonderful! <laughs> this was not a plan. I said, oh. this, this piece of the fire station looks a lot like the old Medfield station. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> oh, my word. Well, thank you. Some citizens have suggested a piece of property that's not right in the center. Is it a requirement that you stay in the center of town? It's, so um, it is not a requirement, but it is most advantageous for us to stay in our current location um, because of our ability to get to all areas of the town in a timely manner. You know, currently we're able to, uh, we answer over 90% of our responses in a shade under five minutes, which is well above the national average. So our capability to get to where we need to get to and to provide the service we provide is, is very important and being in this central location is, is a very important part of that. So this would be on the spring ballot? That be the No, we we'd probably be aiming to be on a, a special town meeting um, in November. It's basically a year from now. We'll probably need a both a town meeting vote and a debt exclusion vote. So we'll need to work closely with say the clerk's office to figure out, you know, or we time this so we could have There'll be, a, I think, a midterm congressional elections next November, trying to maybe time it so we can have the ballot vote the same day so people come out once. Um, we'll have to work on all of that. But that's that's what we're thinking. If, if, it, if the design proceeds and we're ready to ask people to consider it. Yes, but I, I think spring would be too soon. far too soon to, to have a design in place. So I heard that you were thinking of starting next fall. So I'm well, the, the hope is that we would have, um, well, we'd have at least the architect estimate, but we're hoping to, to be able to go out to bid and have a contract just actual bid when we go down. So that people know exactly what it's going to cost, um, so that there's not surprises. I mean, there'll always be a contingency in a project for things that just might come up, uh, and that happens. But um, after previous projects may be the best approach, and we still have to talk about it, is, is it, would the community feel more comfortable with this if we knew that, that we had a price and that was the price? You know, we have to decide what's the best approach. How much specifically is left from the last? 3.3 million. Is what's left? Is what's left. So we already have that to put towards these efforts. So we are, so with the consultants we've hired, the good news is, I mean, the bad news is there's only 3.3 million. <laughs> The good news um, is that that has enabled us to do this work on this feasibility study, go through all the design, go to the point of perhaps bidding it, and then we will need 
some amount more we don't know yet because we're not sure what we'll do um, then we'll be able to tell people with some confidence this is what we need we need the construction and we need some equipment and some furniture and things like that go into a building This probably will come up during the tour. Um, getting the equipment to fit in the building. Um, if we look around this room, we can see that there is an ambulance backed up to a tanker, and there are stops on the floor. Could you address why those things exist? So um, that is one of the things we're hoping to, you know, uh, demonstrate with the tour. Is obviously we had to pull trucks out to create space to, to have or facilitate having this this meeting. Uh, we thought it was important for the citizens in the town to be able to come within the four walls and see the conditions that we're in. But the reason that there are the large stop blocks in place is because the quarters um, where the apparatus is housed currently is so tight that we have to back up with precision. The bumpers on the engine that parts in this bay actually touch the bumper of that ambulance and there is barely maybe a Foot, maybe a foot and a half of space between the engine that parts in this bay and our squad. So, and obviously you cannot walk through, we, we can't walk through this this uh, this particular facility when the apparatus is parked inside. You, you, can't, you can't walk in between the vehicles, there's not enough space. Do I remember Chief Bushnell telling us years ago that they actually kind of had to custom order equipment yes. because you had less than an inch clearance to... Uh, yeah. Yes. We, we currently, for example, like, you know, we have to order, uh, the engine that was ordered for this bay had to be custom ordered, shortened, so that it would fit in the space. We can't order the apparatus with uh, raised roofs, which allow more space for the personnel to uh, properly get uh, dressed in the cabs because it won't fit. Especially uh, small guys? Well, especially small guys. <laughs> um, so, you know, those are limitations that we face. Uh, you know, um, obviously with the ladder truck, there had to be some modification done, and this was back in uh, 94, 95, that that had to, the apparatus was getting too big then, so we certainly are, you know, uh, what, we, what we encounter now is, you know, when we have an incident and uh, a town comes in to cover on our behalf, like if we're out on an extended incident, nobody can fit their apparatus in our bay, so sometimes it creates a challenge because when it's 20 degrees outside, 15 degrees and freezing cold or snowing, you know, the apparatus needs to be under a roof and we can't get a covering apparatus that will fit in this room. Nobody, no apparatus from the surrounding towns actually can fit in here. I know it's not a party to house their vehicles, but it is important to be able to, to reciprocate, you know, uh, when they cover and help us, you know, as we help them. So uh, those, those are challenges that we face and limitations we face. Um, even in particular, the way that squad was designed, uh, it had to be customized or custom engineered so it would fit in the space that we have from a length perspective. Uh, you know, so there are there are limitations that we face. Our ambulances are, are about two feet shorter than a standard ambulance. We have to cut a compartment out so that they will actually fit in the bay. So um, those are things that, that we we have to do. Uh, you know, because of the limitations of, of the space that we have. And unfortunately, sometimes those things, even though it's making things smaller, it, it, it drives up costs sometimes because it's customization in order to fit in confines. Uh, a lot of these manufacturers like to build their cabinetry and, you know, pre-cut their aluminum, pre-cut the stainless steel. And when you have to do a custom job, they can't do that. So then that drives cost up for us mm -hmm. as opposed to us being able to keep costs down. Yes? And the width of the doors. We could see a, an engine right behind you that seems just as wide as the opening. Uh, the openings are very narrow. We have to be very careful. Um, our cabs are industry standard. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't have, you know, extra wide cabs or anything. So it is very narrow. This particular bay is even more narrow. It's, uh, yeah. I think it's 96 or 98 inches. So um, the, the standard fire truck cab, you know, around is usually 99 to 100 or 98 inches. So we're tight. Uh, it's very tight. Uh, we have very small clearances on either side of the apparatus uh, when we're backing in. Um, you know, 
again, we're very fortunate in the town with the, the attention to detail that the staff pay uh, in trying to adapt and overcome. Uh, but these are things that we would love to, I would love to as the chief engineer out of. These are hazards and exposures that, you know, my job would be to engineer out of a new facility so that we limit exposure, potential risk, and cost from incidents like hitting the pillar. I believe in the history of this department, this whole area has been replaced because an apparatus backed into uh, the door pillar. Uh, I talked about covering apparatus. Uh, Foxborough came to cover for us and backed their brand new engine in and ripped the ladder wrap off because the actual uh, the, the, the building is too short. So we've had incidents that have occurred here that have resulted in cost to the, the town, unfortunately, because of the size of the building. You, you say that, and, and I, I, you probably all know this, but I've learned it since I got here, which was that this building was built in 1966. We had no full-time fire department staff here. Um, the 1984 addition was primarily for the police department, and they've gone. So, you know, if you think about it, this is uh, almost, you know, 60, you know, going on a 60-year building, and um, and now we have full, four full-time uh, firefighters on a shift, and there, you know, you'll see the the trailer that, that, that we use, um, and so we want to be ready. You know, not to make excuses, but we certainly want to just be prepared for the future because they're still growing, right? Yep. Hello, <laughs> welcome. All right. Um, if there are no more questions, we'll have uh, Lieutenant Finlan uh, right here. He's going to uh, guide you through a tour of. Um, uh, our living facility and the station. We're going to start with, uh, with, the, with the living facility or trailer in the back. What we're going to do is back the apparatus in so you can see uh, what it's actually like when the apparatus are all in the bay at the conclusion of the tour so you can see how limited the space is um, and kind of the hazard it creates for us. Uh, you know, if you can imagine uh, on a winter night, which we have lots of great pleasant winter nights here in New England, when it's cold and rainy or, or, or icy or snowy, uh, personnel have to come from across the parking lot without any protection from the elements. Uh, we have had incidents, unfortunately, where we've had members fall and be injured, uh, slipping on the ice. Uh, again, kudos to our BPW and our personnel because they have to work extra hard to try to keep surfaces uh, safe and, and do extra salting and shoveling and plowing to make it so that we can function and operate in those types of conditions. So, you know, those are the kind of things we want you to take into account and see, and see with your own eyes. You know, it's one thing for us to tell you, but for you to get to see it and to uh, kind of see what, what we have to do uh, on a daily basis for our operation to be successful and to get an understanding of that is important. So, Could I, Chief, yeah. can you say one thing? Yes. I just want to recognize Ms. Tennant's Finland, do you remember when I came down with Ashley Whitney? I'm thinking of the kinds of, of challenges you go through all day and all night, all year. And my stepdaughter is special needs and she's 40 years old and is terrified of fire trucks. So I said, well, you know what? We're going to go down to the fire station and we're going to take a look at them. I'm sure one of the firemen would be very happy to show us around. And Mike Finland did that. And we have pictures to prove it. Ashley got up on a fire truck. I got up with her and took pictures. And when I told her where I was coming tonight, Say hi to Fireman Mike. She remembers it, Mike. And believe me, Ashley doesn't remember a lot of things I want her to. But I mean, that's the way it is with these people here. So, happy to that. Thank you for sharing that. This is how it goes. It, it's quite a quite a circumference of responsibility. Thank you. It's made my neck. Oh, good, because you made one special girl's day. Thank you. Okay, I'll stop talking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you already uh, this is 
Are you going to drink the king? I'm going to try. Do you want me to carry anything? Yeah.